We're here at uh, Emerald Academy, and this is a remarkable school uh, serving kids here in the in the Knoxville area. Obviously, we are uh, very much engaged in how it is that we create an environment of success for children in this state, and this school is doing it. So we wanted to come take a look, met with some parents, met with some teachers. Uh, what's happening here is what's happening here is a model and an example of what can be happening all across the state. So really encouraged with what we saw here. We're, we're, we're talking a lot about kids uh, in the last 24 hours and how we can make them successful in Tennessee. And we're here in Knoxville to continue that conversation. Question? Um, so about the new, um, Sorry. <clears throat> your new Freedom Education Savings Account, um, this is something that's been implemented in different states across the uh, across the nation and there are some critics that wonder if there are enough options for private schools in more rural counties and here in east tennessee we have lots of rural counties of course knox county we have these private school options what do you um propose for students in rural counties yeah i think the most important thing in the underlying premise of this uh, of this proposal and of this Education Freedom Act is to give parents a choice. Parents know best what's best for their kids uh, as it comes when it comes to their education. And whenever we can give a parent a choice and to give a child options about uh, their educational, you know, the, the, their educational environment, then we're going to find more success for kids. This is really about children and about finding the most successful route for them. We've certainly seen what has happened in other states. There are other states that have had choice. There are nine states in the country right now that have universal school choice. Some have been in, in place for some years, and the results are very good there. Uh, the outcomes are very good there. What we need to do is consider the entire school system. We need to have the best public schools in the country. We need to have choices for parents at the same time. We can have both of those things in Tennessee. I think we'll do that going forward. But specifically for rural counties without options for private schools, what are those kids supposed to do? Because they don't have that choice. It's public school. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, let me tell you what happens in, in rural counties sometimes is, is you have parents who are not satisfied with the schools or the schools are not meeting the needs of that parent. And they may not have a private school. And so what we have seen in rural counties is those families who may work in that county move to another county to go to a public school and they work back in that rural county because there are no options there. And so you lose that capability. And so this school six years ago when the governor came, it was K through two, right? Now it's K through eight. They have a 250 person wait list. And, and now you would have said, schools would have said, well, we don't need charter schools. We don't have enough charter schools. And so they would try to limit the success of this school and what they have achieved simply because they said we didn't have capacity. The one way that you know you'll never get capacity is to do absolutely nothing. But if you give the parents the ability to, to do what's best for their child, because that's what this is about. This is about the children. And you're going to have people who oppose school choice, parental choice, quality of education, and that's fine, but they're gonna go, uh, they're gonna be negative and throw out all kinds of stuff. But the one thing they will never argue against is that every child should have access to a quality education. They cannot defeat that premise. They cannot defeat the premise that kids, currently, not all of them have the ability for a quality education. And so when you say, when we met with the parents here, and the governor asked them, they were very appreciative of having the ability to make that decision for themselves and their family on where they could send their child. And it has changed not only the child's life, but the family's life. Mm -hmm. But the easiest way never to have capacity is to continue to do absolutely nothing yeah. to improve the quality of education in our state. Evan, you have a question? Governor Lee, so the first year of this proposed plan deals a lot with lower income families, households that make less than $20,000, but then year two is eligible to everybody. So with the future of this proposed plan, how would, year, how would we continue to focus on those lower income families? Well, I think we have a priority schedule. So the way that works is we prioritize those with low income and those with disabilities. And once those priorities are met, 
and the students that want to access this program from that pool of students, then we continue to open it up. Uh, that's the way it should work. We need to make it available to those who need it most and then ultimately make it available to all Tennessee families. One of the things that's really important and has been an important statistic for us is our current education savings account program that's in place and is serving uh, thousands of kids in Tennessee right now. 91% of the parents that have utilized an education savings account are pleased with the academic outcomes of their child. 91% of the parents are pleased with that. That's what happens when you have choice and you give parents an option. They choose what they think is best for their kid. Turns out it is best for their kid. And, and when parents are sas satisfied, we have, uh, we found a winning pathway for that child. Let me get to it. Look at today's economy. Inflation's through the roof. Prices are through the roof. What was affordable two years ago, families are having to make cuts. And so now they're deciding between what can I do, what can I not do. You have families who picked up another job so their kids could go to a private school. They may be priced out or incomed out of a, of a poverty level simply because they wanted their family to get ahead. You have families that we've talked to that said, hey, we're going to have to borrow mo money or mortgage the house because we want to send our kids to a private school that we can't afford. And so limiting a parent's ability based on income and thinking that we can do um, just a little bit for the lowest income people, everybody needs help. It shouldn't matter where you live, how much money you make, or what you do, we should give you the capability at some point in the future, whether it's quicker or later, to be able to make those decisions that's best for your family. This is simply about allowing the family to make the conversation and make the decision to provide a quality education for their kid that maybe they're not getting or to meet the unique needs that their child needs that maybe they need to go somewhere else. And so this is a conversation. It's going to keep going about money. Everybody wants to make this about money. It is not about money. It's about the child. It's about that child. And we know if we improve quality education, then they're going to be less likely to be a criminal because we know that what those statistics are. We know the best way out of poverty is a quality education. So for people who continue to say we don't need choice, we don't need choice, all they're doing is keeping the status quo of where we are. And then they turn around and argue, well, we have people in poverty and we have high crime because we don't have quality education. Give the power to the parents and let them make that decision. One more, David. I'll just talk about the, the, the public schools um, in this state. There still are a lot of good options there, aren't there? There certainly are a lot of good options. We have great public schools in the state. We have great public school teachers. And, and we have a great history of investing in our uh, public schools. As you know, we made a historic billion dollar investment when we revamped the funding formula. We will make another significant investment in public schools again this year. We have raised our teacher pay to a top 10 level. Uh, our teachers will be in the top 10 of states in America with as it relates to teacher pay. We've spent uh, half a billion dollars in middle school and high school CTE programs in our public schools all across Tennessee to enhance the pathways of success for children. We believe that in order to have a, a, an environment for children that works for all families, that we've got to have strong public schools, we've got to continue to invest in them, and we've got to offer parents choice at the same time. When we do that, this is not a, it's not a matter of choosing either or, it's both and, and Tennessee can do that. And when we do that, our students will rise ahead and uh, find the success that they need. Thank you so much for coming today. We appreciate it. Thank you.